so that we can proceed into uh, other matters, since we are already, uh, uh, already behind time. So without much ado, uh, may I ask Mr. President Mary Kanawa to take the podium. Prime Minister Sunak, the very best, 
and uh, that as he settles down in his role, you will be looking at countries like Zambia and ensure that the democracy we profess is actually affected and defected, and that the political landscape is labeled to ensure fair play and equal representation through the British High Commission. We hope that this message will be sent to the Prime Minister and highlight the current political and governance landscape under the current regime. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, allow me to bring you back home and more specifically to the reason why we are here today. You will recall that I applied to the Registrar of Societies for the formation of a party which we had called Liberty. It was brought to my attention that His Excellency the President had taken keen interest in my application and the instructions were given from his office to ensure that all efforts were made to delay the approval of that party until at least a few years before the elections. As usual. But what is sad is that while the president has gone around the world parading himself as the restorer of peace and democracy in Zambia, the evidence on the ground, however, is pointing in the opposite direction. Sooner rather than later, these lies will be exposed and made bare for all to see someone for who they really are. Your Excellencies, we've had a very terrible experience at the Register of Societies. Very humiliating to say the least. Mm. Where a person goes and says, this is the party I want. There are officers there, like uh, APS, Matambo, uh, Mat Mat or whatever he calls himself. P.S. Akafumba, Mr. Yui at uh, Intelligence Force Headquarters. These have placed themselves as the deciders of Zambia's destiny. Mm. They are the ones from what Yui, when I was talking to him, my personal was telling me that he had instructions from the very highest office to stop me from going ahead and form the political party. So, which highest office can that be in our country apart from the one at State I can only conclude that this is the democracy that our president has been preaching about. And what is sad in all this is that the British, the Americans, who pontificate democracy, have elected silence. Because maybe it's probably a blue-eyed boy in there, uh, in that seat. But I am calling upon their excellencies. It is important for you to be good firefighters. Don't wait for the fire to grow before you start coming now. I'll bring people together. I think this is the time uh, for the High Commissioner for uh, the UK, the American Ambassador, the, the diplomats accredited the Republic of Zambia. It is time for them to begin talking down to President Haka in Haiti that there are issues that you need to deal with. You were in the opposition for the last 15, 23 years. <coughs> and you want now to make it more complicated for others to a point where we are to use plan B to be where we are here today. But why in God's name should it be difficult to form a political party in Zambia and one has to hide behind other faces for them to be given a political party? And even when they unveil you, I was telling President Kavimba before we came here, even when they unveil you, to say this is our candidate. Now, can you include him on the list of office bearers? No, 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 no. Uh, you have to wait. Because there is this clause which we have to deal with. The responsibility of choosing a president of a political party lies with those office bearers. Yes. 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 Once they agree, once they agree 
that this is the person that we have chosen. Yes. Finito. Finito. Mm. I know they didn't want me back here, but I'm back. Ladies and gentlemen, one of a few elements within the state machinery, we are busy trying to frustrate the cause of the Liberty Party. A new party was being built, and it got its certificate on the 23rd of September, and that party is called Citizens First. And here it is today, they have overthrown me. In 1966, I don't want to be a bad student of history. The same applies for us today, leaders. If we don't unite, if we don't speak with one voice, if we don't watch out for what brings us together, instead of what takes us away, we will not reach far. We have to begin looking out for our strengths yes. instead of our weaknesses. Yes. Yes. the mantle of leadership of Citizens First. Wow. I would like to remind the Republican President and P.S. Machombo to focus on addressing the many challenges mm. that the people of Zambia are faced with, yeah. rather than fighting Hari Kalaba. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The challenge this country is faced with is greater than Hari Kalaba. As you can see by the people present today, we in the opposition have come to realize that there is more that unites us than that which divides us. We are therefore seeking to have a common ground through which we shall address all manners of political vices and challenges with civility and unity of purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, members of the press, I accept the honor bestowed upon as president of the Citizens First, and I want to call upon the people of Zambia to seek hope in the face of despair. I also want us to remind ourselves that we need to brace ourselves as we get into 2023. We shall bring with it serious hardship through price hikes, following the removal of subsidies on fuel at the end of the year. It is my prayer that if there is anything this announcement will accomplish, it is that we'll be more united than being divided. Mm -hmm. Zambia help is on the way. Mm -hmm. And that help will not just come from me and Kalaba alone. 
That help is coming from all of us seated here and beyond. But when all these leaders here present put their collective effort and wisdom together, we will, we will achieve that help. We'll be able to uh, arrest the subjective fight against graft that has characterized the current government while they continue to abuse national resources. We will be able to assure youths that they do not need to change their name or use their middle name to get employed. We will be able to reassure them that it is okay to trust, but they need to trust the right people who will not betray them and sell them off along with national assets to the highest foreign bidder. Mm. We will be able to assure the mother that their dignity will be restored. All they need to do is wait a little while longer. Help is on the way. 2026 may seem far off, but the journey has to start now. Yes. So, it is embarrassing that after 58 years of independence, the majority of our people are still wallowing in abject poverty and can barely afford one meal a day. The price of essential commodities continues to rise at an alarming rate and are beyond the reach of most Zambians. And yet those in leadership seem to be preoccupied with the quest of dividing a tribal <coughs> or regional wealth in order to further divide the nation while creating opportunities for foreign interests at the expense of the majority Zambians. Never before has Zambia been this polarized. Finally, finally, before me, I have a college to say one or two words, I'm sure they're here. I want to call upon well-meaning Zambians to join our movement as we seek to work together with all political players, civic leaders, the church, the madrasas, the civil society, the civil servants, the youths who were fed a lie during the 2021 elections, the farmers who were promised time to deliver of inputs, the retired officers who, who were used and abandoned, and all men and women of goodwill to join us so that we can sing an anthem of unity together as one and we set ourselves on that path to restore and live the one Zambia, one nation motto. I sincerely thank you. God bless you. And may he bless the public of Zambia. Harry Kalaba, President, Citizens First. to a time when people must offer themselves 
because they want to uplift the living standards of Zambians and not because they want to bring in whosoever to come and loot the resources that this country has. The time has come when Zambians must hold hands together and take back this nation for Zambians. So um, I think you are going to see that the political landscape is going to change, that the way we do politics is going to change because we have to think about Zambians. So citizens first, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Loud and clear, the press is here, word for word. We are going to vote. May I ask uh, President Tayan to come and speak? Finished doing their mentors, they needed to be reunited with their families. 
Because those families had missed them for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's like um one I have boarding you for <laughs> six months. Error is a number of kill up. You the parents are not able to access that child. And the Dorit Mamba responded with a lot of venom to us, uh, calling us all sorts of, of names. Uh, it is apparent that uh, the minister wants to compete with us in the opposition in terms of the language that we use. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as we are in the opposition, we are in government. It is our job to use strong language. It is our job to govern. <laughs> so there has to be a difference. You cannot have a minister competing with the opposition in terms of using uh, strong language. So since you, the media, are here today, I think you can go and tell Doreen. <laughs> but uh, if Doreen has too much time at her hands, maybe she should uh, start visiting the gym. <laughs> and you must also advise Doreen that uh, if she is offered food, she should not accept all the time. <laughs> There should be time to when she yeah. should say no. <laughs> so, Doreen needs to be reminded that uh, it is not uh, in her place as minister to use strong language against us in the opposition. Because the day that we respond, she's going to say that uh, we are being disrespectful to a minister. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
where even if you went to ACC, even if you went to DEC, you will not find a file. Mm. <laughs> 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 <Not sure about laughs> but you certainly won't find a file on Hari Kalaba or a file about corruption on Winter Kabimba DEC. <laughs> Reminds me, always in love with the Bible. That is Exodus 18, verses 17 to 21. This is a story about Jethro, who was visiting his son in law Moses. And when Jethro spent a few days with the Moses at his home, where his daughter was married, one day he asked Moses a question. Because every day he saw scores and scores of people coming to gather at Moses' house. And he said to him, how are you managing to deal with all these people that are coming to see you. And what are they here for? And Moses answered, they are coming here to learn from me. And they are also coming here to settle their disputes. And Jethro said, no, no, no. This task is, very, is too much for you. It shall wear you out. Now, let me tell you what you do. And Jethro is just about to leave after the visit. And he said to Moses, what do you do in order for you to discharge this, this job perfectly well so that it doesn't take a toll on your health? Mm. Go out in this community and find men. Not that Jethro was not gender sensitive. <laughs> and he said to Moses, the men that you find to be part of the leadership of this court of yours, one, they must be men that are God fearing. Mm -hmm. He said to him. And secondly, and thirdly, they must be men who hate bribes. Not who don't like. There is a difference. When we are learning English at school, if you say to your friend, I hate you, and there was an English teacher near you, they would ask you, are you sure you mean me what you have said? Because we are mixing up with the word hate and not liking someone. If you hate somebody, it means you can go to the extent of even eliminating them, killing them. But if you don't like them, that is a much more mild statement. And Jethro deliberately uses this way. You look at many Bible translations. Men who hate bribes. Men who hate bribes. Mm. Those should be, should form the composition of your team. In our country, we do the opposite. We get robes into state house. We get robes into government. We get dictators into state house. Mm. We get dictators into ministries. And then after that, we start wondering what has gone wrong with our country. <laughs> Barack Obama once said, the politicians are just as good as you, the voters. So why are you wondering today that you have a wrong man in the state house? Why? And the man keeps on pointing to 2.8 million people who voted for him, who purportedly voted for him. <laughs> Zambia, even under one party state, some of you may be young in this gallery. Even during a one-party state, 
have never seen, and I was part of that, I transited from a one-party state to a multi-party system. Never seen institutions of governance so compromised as I have seen today. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Same. I've never seen institutions of governance as compromised as we have seen today. But let me say this in the conclusion. The name citizens first is very appropriate, President Khan. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Because the Bible again says the voice of the people is the voice of God. Mm. That's what the Bible says. So even if HH decides to be the chairman of the Electoral Commission of Zambia in 2026, mm. you, the Zambians, will still kick him out. Yes. Because your voice is the voice of God. Yes. Yes. We've now come to realize, and I don't think we need extra strong man in that office. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Now come to realize that the church in that office is a fraud. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have now come to realize that we put a hypocrite in the state house. Mm. Yes. We have now come to realize that Zambia cannot move forward with the church in the state house. Mm. We have now come to realize that the church has come to serve the interest not of the Zambians but of the foreigners. Mm. As we count down to 2026, we should go back to the MMD slogan, HHE Zwa. HHE what? Zwa. HHE what? Zwa. Thank you very much. Yes, members of the press, we will take two very hot questions. Uh, two very hot questions. I, I see uh, the, the, yeah, yeah. One, one person. Then uh, we'll take another one. Okay, yes. All right. So the two questions have come. Um, have we been one ago so that we can hear what the questions are? Please go ahead. One question from my, my name is Alfonso from My question goes to the international. Uh, it is a new point that we brought uh, on board. And uh, in the questions uh, are stated much. What are you bringing on board? What should the Zambia expect from you? Thank you. Can we take the other question? Yes, yes sir. Yeah, please introduce yourself and the, the house looking that you are representing. One very precise question. Good morning, panelists. Congratulations, Mr. Kalabato. My name is Meshek, Meshek Jinirongo, I'm from CBC TV. There is an allegation or an assumption that the politics of many political parties have not brought development to Africa, even to Zambia. And the question is, um, we've been having many political parties in Zambia, but 58 years after independence, why are we so poor when we have a lot of wealth, mineral resources? Thank you. All right. Uh, before I allow President Kalama, I've uh, just noticed that we, are, we have uh, been graced by President Slav. Is there a seat for the President? Yes. 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 You're welcome, sir. You're welcome, Mr. President.
as as today's tradition, Mr. President, we did ask for a few words from from the president. So maybe you can, before President Kalawa takes his uh, questions, you can greet the press and just speak on one or two things pertaining to our newborn baby and to what we the president of this country. You may take the point. I think I've admitted openly here 
but I'm, I'm not the best out of my colleagues here. Uh, all I'm saying is that we need to work together as opposition political parties uh, in order to forge the way ahead. I think that is the newness of what is coming on the show. It's for me to talk to uh, President Kajenda. Right? I have lunch with Madam I, have, I mean, uh, talk to Madam Savoy, you are welcome. And that is the newness of things. And as you know, uh, we've always believed in industrialization of, of our country. Uh, you can talk as much as you want without allowing Zambians to be in the forefront foreigners uh, running the affairs of this country, like it's currently happening, we are stuck. We are stuck. So you need to increase your CDF to 30 million and then what? And then what? So that is the new direction that we are taking. And I think your question was similar to your question. What is the same? Oh, sorry. We have a main from the independence and nothing has changed. But I think today should be testimony of what we're trying to do. I mean, the, the fact that Tayadi, President Tayadi, President Savoy, President Sean, President Kabiba, President Kajeka, uh, President Silako, uh, uh, I can leave their affairs to come and support someone they should perceive as an opponent, mm. it speaks volumes. Mm. Yeah. You know, you can't even explain it. But I'm happy to see the real leadership of the DP actually 
And I would encourage you, despite the class marks, the UPND is trying to, flat, to, to float out a, a, a fake GP. That's a real GP there, actually. So I'm happy, President Kala, that even when you left GP, Father, we come before you this morning and in this day. We want to thank you because you are God eternal. You sanction things before the foundations of the earth. And the heart of a king is in your hand. You lead it where you want it to go. And Father, to some you have given folly. And in the folly they have failed in themselves. We want to pray for today and for this nation, Zambia. You gave us this nation, God, because 
you knew it is your nation. And Father, your throne is established in justice. And every injustice doesn't speak of you, O oh God. And Father, we pray that the throne of kingship should be a throne of justice. And if there is injustice, then we know it is not of you, O oh God. When the wicked rule, people have pain. Yes. And when the righteous rule, people rejoice. Yes. Father, no one can watch over a city without your power and strength. And here we pray for our leaders, the political leaders present here especially. That let this mandate that you are designating to them be sanctioned by your hand. We pray for protection. We have heard now and again the injustice that is going on. Not only heard, but seen. Not only seen, but witnessed. Yes. And therefore we declare, Father, that a man can fight but for a season. Yes. A man can be strong but for a season. Yes. A man can show off but for a season. Yes. And there are times when you bring kings down. Yes. God, we pray right now, yes. how high man can go can also be brought low. Yes. We are not afraid to call upon your name. Yes. And we are not afraid to say Zambia belongs to you. Yes. Thank you, Jehovah God. Yes. We may say a lot, yes. but the Holy Ghost take up from here in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen.